Ashes of Creation has been putting out cosmetic bundles for the game since the beginning of time. And although it's not really a bad thing or a good thing, it's one of the biggest complaints I see whenever I update a monthly cosmetic video. And there are a lot of people out there who keep asking why are they putting out cosmetics for a game that isn't even out. The short answer is because they can. Cosmetics are something that are part of just about every live service game these days, and although the monthly bundles of multiple options of skins that aren't complete aren't ideal in a lot of people's minds. It doesn't exactly hurt the development of Ashes of Creation, but eventually things will have to change with this system because currently the system really doesn't make much sense. If you have a brand new Ashes of Creation account and you jump in to see a monthly cosmetic, well unfortunately with no active bundles on your account, you can't just buy the cosmetic you like. You have to buy a bundle, which the cheapest one is $75, and it gives you beta 2 access along with some game time and embers, an in-game currency that won't have any use until there is an actual game to play. Play. You can't just be like, oh, I like that mount skin, I want it, because you just can't buy it unless you buy a bundle. But once you buy your first bundle, you do gain access to purchasing each individual item for a cheaper cost. But on the bright side of these cosmetics, Intrepid offers no pay to win mechanics. So although you can buy some pretty badass looking pets, mounts, and clothing, these guys will give you absolutely nothing to offer from a stat standpoint. Although mounts in the game will have abilities, these cosmetics will not not because they are skins that go over existing items you don't actually get this cool looking dragon to fly around on you get a skin that goes over your existing mount to make it look like you have a cool dragon to fly on so although it's kind of the same idea the skills of the current mount you have equipped will function the exact same with that skin attached if you equipped this dragon like skin to a horse mount it's still going to perform as a horse and it's not going to give you flying unless you have one of the rare flying mounts in the game there's no pay to win for it, thus not changing really anything. So why exactly does Intrepid do it? They say it's not for the money, the studio is completely self-funded by creative director Steven Sharif, they had a very successful Kickstarter, and I imagine there isn't a ton of people buying these cosmetic packs early, except for those who really want to get into the testing phases, or just those dedicated Intrepid fans. So, my best guess would be it gives players something tangible in a sense to buy and get excited about, while also getting alpha and beta testers in the end. But clearly, cosmetics for Ashes of Creation aren't going anywhere, even post-launch, because why have an in-game currency if you have nothing to sell? In-game currency means Intrepid will want people to buy things from their store, and they're 100% intending on implementing one into the game. But hopefully the bundle system goes away a long time before then. Which honestly, with no pay to win, I am not completely opposed to mount and pet skins. Maybe the occasional cape or freehold building, but I am one of those people who absolutely absolutely hates armor and weapon skins in any game. I think it completely ruins the immersion of being in awe of how people obtain specific weapons and armor. Skins like this just tend to ruin that. It also takes away from being able to size up an opponent on the battlefield, knowing how good or bad of a fight you might have on your hands based on the gear that they currently have equipped. And skins take away from all of that. I'm not completely against transmog from gear that you've obtained in the past because that still gives a small sense of where someone has been on their adventures and they earn that gear they didn't just buy it but having shop skins will always ruin that immersion for me in pve situations it probably doesn't matter as much as you're more focused on fighting the bosses than other players and your friendly allies can inspect you to see what you're wearing anyways ultimately though i don't think you'll see a lot of the current cosmetic skins out on the field in vera i'm pretty sure they'll be somewhat rare because as i've said i don't believe a lot of people are buying them currently and when millions of new players flood the divine gateways it will be a rare sight to see picking them out amongst all of the new players. But this will create a bit of FOMO too, as any player just discovering the game will not be able to pick up any of the skins of the past, and with the rarity to them, it's really a now or never type situation. Sure, there may be some recolors available in the game to get your hands on, but they will never be quite the same as the original, and there are already so many cosmetics that people have missed out on. And not even all of them are just shop bundle skins. There were numerous armor skin pieces from Ashes of Creation Apocalypse that are 
are no longer available, including the armor of the Autumn Knight, which you had to max out on the Battle Pass to get this. This will probably be one of the rarest skins in the game. And there's also the Emberworm Dragon Mount that I believe was a limited time event in Apocalypse that's no longer obtainable and Apoc isn't exactly here anymore, so you really aren't getting these skins if you don't have them. In reality though, these cosmetic bundles aren't going anywhere, but Intrepid could definitely look into making them a lot more player friendly and there are a few ways that they could do that. First would be to make the models before you make the postings. All cosmetics are just what Intrepid is using for NPCs in the world and creatures and things like that, so show the players what you are actually buying. Show them the in-game models. Intrepid does a great job of bringing concept to life and keeping them looking very similar, but a lot of people still don't want to buy concept art, and it would probably help alleviate some of that scam talk. Second, Intrepid could limit the functionality of skins in the world, having it work in a way such as PvP objectives that flag you as a combatant, disable any armor or weapon skins that you are wearing so players can see what they are truly up against, but allow players to continue to wear them throughout the world when they're exploring or doing PvE activities. And lastly, like I said earlier, don't lock the cosmetics behind bundles. Allow people to buy what they want from the start, even if this means they miss out on alpha or beta keys. Some people just want the cool mount skin without the obligation of a minimum $75 pre-order of a game that is years out from release. What are your thoughts on Ashes of Creation's current cosmetic situation? Drop a comment down below and if you're new to Ashes and have yet to create an account, feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump in on the forums, buy some cosmetics, or just hang out until you can finally step foot into the world of Vera. Otherwise, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, turn on the bell for notifications, and stay tuned for a lot more to come.